Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Fader, I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 16th and the 23rd of December 2017. First of all, I want to begin by apologizing for not giving you the 15th and the 16th on last week's video. Mercury retrograde, I blame it on the stars. Um, so let's start with the 15th and 16th, they're sensitive days. And you're probably behind them already. <laughs> and I'm sorry for that. They're sensitive days. The sun is squaring Chiron. It's a time that we could feel much more acutely in the light that flows from within us to the outside world, our creative endeavors and who we are and what we do in this world. We can feel much more acutely where the system is still flawed. I heard uh, Dr. Robert Hand speak last week and I like what he said about Chiron. He said that that's where the initial flaw is and if we address that then our system can work much more calmly and 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 without any f uh, malfunctions so we're heading into a saturn sun venus lilith conjunction at the end of this week we'll be feeling it all through this week this is an important week this is a week in which both the sun and Saturn are going into Capricorn. This is a new moon week. So there's just so many energies in the sky. Let's begin at the beginning and finish at the end and see how it goes. <laughs> so I want to talk a bit about that Saturn, Sun, Venus, Lilith conjunction. Whenever the Sun conjuncts, conjuncts a, a, a Saturn, it's a time that we could be much more aware and judgmental both towards ourselves and both towards others regarding how things should be done regarding issues of responsibility and and standing up to the chores and challenges that life throws upon us there's a lot of time a theme of fathers and sons that come up or a domineering authority and and a subjected and a subjected person, you know, like so bosses or fathers can come up at this time. But it's also about us taking responsibility. It's also about us maturing. It's also about us teaching our, you know, our son, the way we create in this world, something Saturnian, to create something that is very solid, to create something that is very concrete, to create something that can be uh, trusted that is dependable and in, endures over the trials of time and when we add that to that mix we add Venus then a lot of uh, issues like our own self-esteem and the way we provide ourselves with satisfaction in our lives the way we behave within relationships the way we provide income into our lives comes into that broth okay and if we add Lilith to that broth Lilith talks about the less conscious sides the protocols within us that sometimes hide beneath the curtains but are really running the show when it comes to a certain area of our life we're not aware of how much love and attention we need so we become so much needy we become so needy and then we're too intense for people and people can't handle that can't can't handle us anymore just as a you know as an example so lilith is 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 talking about subjects that are not totally in our awareness but have some kind of a self destructive mechanism play out within within that uh, within that behavior so we throw that as we spice things up with Lilith in that conjunction so we could actually you know things can come up to our consciousness with that Saturn Sun we could be judged for that less honorable and less um, you know uh, p parts of ourselves that are less in the open but are still many times creating havoc in our lives could be exposed and could be judged which is not a bad thing we just have to be careful that Lilith doesn't run amok within us in this time 
So, on the 16th, the sun is still square in Chiron. On the 17th, the moon is in Sag, and it's conjunct to Mercury and Venus. Mercury going backwards and Venus going forwards. And, 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 and this is just a day to enjoy yourself, you know? It's about feeling Sagittarian. It's about going out of your boundaries, going out of your comfort zone, making life an adventure, just feeling like you're on a vacation, indulging with that extra um, uh, sweetener or, or, or uh, a teaspoon of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, um, of sugar, I'm sorry, in your coffee, or just a scoop of ice cream after dinner. Uh, or being with someone that you like, it's a good day for conversation, it's a good day for relationships, and it's a good day for satisfaction. Talking about satisfaction, this tea is amazing. You know I have a tea fetish, right? I didn't mean it that way. Don't go there, please. So, um, this is Yogi tea. I don't get anything from Yogi, they don't pay me <laughs> to advertise them. And they have a small message on the other side, you know, uh, let's see what did I get. It's like a fortune cookie. People who love are happy. How right they are. Mm -hmm. These yogis, they're so smart. And um, changing accents like crazy. That's, that's Mercury retrograde playing with my mind. And this is actually called Egyptian licorice and it's fabulous. So, why is the 17th? such an important day to enjoy yourselves on because it's the day before the new moon in Sagittarius. And as you know, I always say that every new moon is a time that we are like emotional sponges, you know, things are imprinted within us and stay with us for the next lunar cycle, 28 and a half days. So I always try to be as calm and as positive and as thankful as I can the day before and the day after the new moon. This new moon in Sagittarius is conjunct Saturn and Venus. So again, those themes come up and the moon uh, uh, just adds into the mix, you know, making all the things we talked about before even more powerful even more powerful. And the next day after that, on the 19th, Saturn actually enters Capricorn. And it's going to stay in Capricorn until the 21st of March, 2020. It's going to have two retrogrades in Capricorn, the first being in 21st of March, 2018. And if you remember, for the last two and a half years, it was so... Um, more, more or less, it was in Sagittarius, excuse me. And we really, it really emphasized, it judged what we believe in, our fates, and it took away some of the grays and divided them back into black and whites, Be made things very clear in the arena of ideology in the arena of philosophy, of world views. And we suddenly saw how bad radical Islam is, and we suddenly saw how awful the Islamic, uh, 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 the ISIS are, you know, and all these radical new organizations that came up. Of course, we knew that radical Islam was, was terrible before that, but during these two and a half years, we actually went to war, you know, all over the world with radical groups, you know. And the, the difference between light and darkness in the realms of ideology became much more apparent. And the two became much more extreme. Our, our ideologies became more extreme. If we're right-wing, we became more right-wing. If we are leftists, we became more leftists. You know, if we're Democrats, we became staunch Democrats. And if we were Republican, we became staunch Republicans. You know, everybody separated into their own corner, so to speak. And things were judged. Things were judged anew and they passed through a judgment. And that judgment, you know, comes into Capricorn right now. This is Capricorn. This is, uh, this is Saturn walking into its own sign. 
it's like uh, Capricorn times Capricorn is, <laughs> you know, it's strong and it's karmatic. And we have to remember that also at December 2020, which is not so long away, there's a conjunction between Saturn and Pluto. Now, I remember uh, listening to Wendy Stacy at the Opa Live event a few days back and she talked about the last time that that happened at 1517 to 1521 and she said that was the time that Martin Luther actually established the Protestant Church and the Reformation movement and changed the whole of Europe you know changed the whole of Europe because basically the Catholic Church was ruling everything up to that time so the ruling establishments lost power they were judged they were judged harshly because um, they were too um, unresponsive and too rigid and they fell from power they fell from grace and new things came so this time has a potential for a great shift in the pillars of the earth we're talking about the financial system the banking system we're talking about the uh, system of the law and judgment we're talking about governmental establishments we're talking about the fabric or even more so the 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 spinal cord you know uh, that on which our whole society is 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 uh, is dressed on like like the muscles and the tendons and the skin you know over our bones over our skeleton the skeleton is being judged and this is a very karmatic time in the sense that if those very established places those pillars of the earth or in our personal lives our own skeleton the places in which we build our own lives upon are not valid are not solid enough or are not up to the job anymore or you know on the grounds of reality if that doesn't prove itself with saturn saturn doesn't give it about what we wish for or about what we are afraid of just if it works or if it doesn't you know and if it doesn't it falls apart and if it does saturn actually strengthens it and gives it the the ranks upon its shoulder and more responsibility a higher ranking so in our personal lives over the next two and a half years you know the places that maybe seem to us as if they are as stable as they could be in our lives would be judged would be judged and if they are not standing up to reality they will need to crumble away or change and in a more public way political leaders are um, facing judgment political systems and the systems of governments and the system of law and order is standing up to judgment and uh, of course anything that is concerned with the old ways with the um, trinity that runs this this society which is power money information okay so all of these uh, can be shifted the the, the 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 shift is in the centers of power in a sense so that's what we have with uh, saturn going into capricorn and of course, what the end result will be is that it would be much clearer to all of us which rules should be followed, which rules should not be followed. It would be much clearer to us where we should take responsibility by ourselves and on ourselves, take self-responsibility, and where we should give that responsibility to other people in our lives. It's about growing up, it's about maturing, and it's about understanding more wisdom regarding the systems of governments and establishment of society basically not a bad thing 
although not a very easy thing as well. So on the 20th, the moon is conjunct Pluto. It could be a day that we're caught up in the drama. Please try to be more um, logical on that day and uh, round edged. Don't let yourself um, forget yourself in the moment and think that the drama that you're caught in right in that you're caught in right now is the most important thing happening on this planet ever ever no so really try and be more strategic on the 20th we could be very sexual on the 20th though mm -hmm. <laughs> we could be a, a lot more inquisitive and psychological as well with that conjunction to pluto we could find things out that have been hidden from our eyes we could find things out about our own emotions on the 21st the sun enters capricorn happy birthday all you capricorns what would we what would we have done without you everything would fall apart right and the moon squares mars on that day as well so a little too aggressive maybe a little too uh, agitated as well our male energies are not balanced on that day so be careful with your sensuality and your sexuality on that day as well because of that imbalance all our male attributes and more carnal attributes are challenged in that day and uh, the 22nd saturn sun uh, exact conjunction and we talked about how we feel when saturn and the sun uh, meet and mercury is going finally direct up and we can feel things lifting regarding how we navigate ourselves through our lives regarding how we input and output information regarding communication and electrical appliances and deals and schedules it would still be not as well as in a regular time because this mercury is still very slow and it's still in the shadow of its retrograde but once it passes the shadow and picks up speed will feel uh, completely okay but from the 22nd it's already starting to lift it's already better and on the 23rd we could feel uh, the conjunction already of mars and jupiter and they're squaring the nodes this is a watershed moment for mars and jupiter and uh, regarding their uh, journey uh, between the nodes and whenever mars is in a position like that you know then we think of how these energies these martian energies these uh, uh, male animalistic uh, assertive energies within us are utilized in our lives and are we progressing to a good um, position are they taking us are we utilizing them in the right way and this time usually produces a, a sense of necessity for a jump forward for a leap forward for believing that we can overcome our boundaries that we can make this an adventure with that conjunction to Jupiter and that we need to believe in what we are doing that's about everything I had to tell you for this week but again every comment and every like and every share exposes this video to more people and I want to thank you for watching. I'm wishing you a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week ahead too. And of course, for private consultations or studying evolutionary astrology, please contact me or Georgia. Take care. Bye-bye.